Welcome back. Uh, so let's now go about designing a triangular waveform generator. Uh, and let's imagine we wanted to generate a triangular waveform with a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of 8 volts. That means 4 volts of amplitude. And a frequency of 1 kilohertz. And let's imagine, for the sake of example, that our saturation voltage for the op-amps is plus minus 13 volts. So symmetrical, positive and negative. Uh, and I've brought back uh, both the circuit, uh, the waveforms, and the, uh, the expressions for V1 and V2, as well as the period, the expression for the period and the frequency of oscillation, just to make things easier to visualize. Uh, so it is obvious that since we want a triangular waveform generator, we are going to take V2 as the output of our circuit. Um, and then in order to set our period of oscillation, uh, well, first we're going to go ahead and set our amplitude. So one set amplitude uh, V equals the max, let's say, is equal to um, 4 volts. And it's understood that this is going to be plus minus 4 volts for our triangular waveform. Now, the magnitude is set uh, by Vt, and we see Vt is equal to um, R1 over R2 times the saturation voltage. So R1 and R2 is, uh, are the resistors that are going to determine the amplitude of our circuit. Um, that means that the ratio R1 divided by R2 is going to be equal to uh, Vsat or Vt divided by Vsat or on the inverse, um, since R2 is equal to KR1, we can have R2 divided by R1, which is equal to K, equal to Vsat divided by Vt. Since Vsat is 13 volts, and Vt we want it to be 4 volts, that gives me 3.25. And so that's the ratio between R2 and R1, or what we've labeled as K. Uh, I can choose multiple resistor values that are going to meet this specification, but for the sake of example, I'm going to go ahead and select um, R1 being equal to 12 kilo ohms, and in that case, R2 is going to be equal to 3.25 times 12K, or 39 kilo ohms. So those are my first two values. And then uh, my frequency of oscillation or uh, period of oscillation is going to be determined by RC, uh, the resistor and capacitor, on the integrator side of the circuit. So set uh, frequency to 1 kilohertz, which is equivalent to setting the period to 1 millisecond. So I can use either one uh, of those equations, the period of the frequency. I'm going to go ahead and choose my period. Uh, so I'm going to have T equals 4RC divided by K, which means my RC is going to be equal to um, K times T divided by 4, or 3.25 times 1 milli divided by 4. And that comes out to be um, 0.813 times 10 to the negative 3. Yeah. And again, this is just the product of R times C, so I can choose uh, different values of R and C that are going to give me around that value. Um, a reasonable selection would be to select my capacitor, and I typically will select my capacitor first because there are uh, less available values of capacitance than there are of resistance, but if I choose my capacitor equal to 12 nanofarads, for example, then my resistor will come out to be 68 kilo ohms by um, substituting in that expression. Now, you know, this may not be the initial value that one comes up with. Sometimes it takes a little bit of an iterative process. You come up with some reasonable value for capacitance, and then you figure uh, your resistor is too large or too small, and so you kind of go back and either decrease or increase your capacitance by whatever value in order to get your resistor within the right range. 
Um, but the idea is that you know you you want uh, reasonable values for in this case for discrete components for both devices. Uh, so you want you want to reach that compromise. Uh, but that's it. Essentially, these are the values for the circuit, and we've been able to design a triangular wave, a triangular waveform generator that produces a triangular wave with four volts of amplitude or eight volts peak to peak, and a frequency of one kilohertz. Thank you.